You touched on it a little bit about there are no other dimensions, there is no time travel, and that's where I begin to get confused with other things that I have, have heard of. Well, here, we can clarify that for you. So You're not going to make fun of me more, though, right? <laughs> you come asking for that, and we give it to you every time. Touché. So, it's the cosmic circus that we are all a part of. <laughs> every thought that has ever been thought still exists. So... Anyone who has ever lived, let's talk about this dimension in which you are familiar, this time and space reality as you sort of understand it to be. Everyone who has ever been here and everyone who has ever thought anything, that thought still exists. And if the thought was not considered by a lot of others, it may exist in its original undeveloped form. Or if it's a thought that many have thought about, collectively maybe because it's on television now or over time it was passed on from generation to generation so the thought was considered a lot those thoughts take on greater vibrational momentum and they become greater form so every thought that has ever been thought still exists as you came forth from non-physical you came with this clarity of who you are you came as love and upliftment and high frequency vibration you came from the culmination of all that's ever been lived. Now, humans want to call that God. doesn't matter what you call it, but it's the source of energy that continues to expand. So this high frequency, meaning no resistance from your perspective, there's contrast in everything, but you couldn't discern it. This high frequency vibration, as this high frequency vibration is the genesis of that which you are, and you come forth into this time and space reality your opportunity to explore contrast is keener than that of your inner being it's the decision that you made it's what happens when oh we haven't said this to you before it's what happens when as non-physical energies you focus into action orientation into manifestation and there's so much we want to give you all at once. We're happy that you're up to speed with this. And that is in fact why when you try to create your life through action, it's why you have a tendency to want to do that because the see it, hear it, smell it, taste it, touch it is so intoxicating to you because it's such a full spectrum of your awareness. And it feels good. Sometimes it feels good and sometimes it feels bad, but it's richer, it's fuller, it feels more meaningful. You call it real. It feels more real because it is more mature in its manifestation. So as you come into this time and space and you explore and you launch new rockets of desire, those rockets that we talk about emanating from you, your desire, are received by your inner being and then focused upon by that part of you. So we want to say, and this isn't the precise and accurate terminology, but it's the closest that Esther can find for what we mean. It's like a purifying process. It's like you sorted through the contrast and you came to a conclusion, maybe even at unconscious levels. When someone's rude, you know you want them to be nicer, for example. And you launch this rocket and your inner being then becomes a clarifying process of that and holds the pure intent that you put into the vortex. Now, you don't hold the pure intent. You're over here usually feeling the reason that you launched the rocket. So you're nowhere close to pure about what you want. You're still holding the grudge that made you want the improvement. But your inner being took the improvement. And it's this vortex that we're describing and this non-physical growing, expanding energy that we call source energy. Now, of course, it's logical that every thought you think does that in other words when you worry about something it's like you launch a rocket into another vortex so we want to make a distinction between this desire that is tended by your non-physical inner being and the thoughts that are just the spin-off of man's conscious thought sometimes someone will have a very negative feeling thought maybe even by your earth standards considered to be a very heinous thought that will lead to by earth standards a very heinous deed and you will wonder well what caused the expansion of that and that's when we say 
every thought that has ever been thought still exists. And law of attraction gathers not just these pure positive thoughts, not just these thoughts of love and appreciation and source, but law of attraction gathers all thoughts. And because law of attraction is active upon every vibration, those thoughts grow and expand too. You we, said earth standards. Are there other standards? We mean by the perspective that you are holding, because that's the only perspective that you can have a conversation about. Okay. You can't talk about any perspective other than the one that you hold. And so since that's where we are, don't go there for just a minute. Let's stay here. <laughs> Let's stay here until this thought is mature enough that you've gained something from it. Okay. So what happens is these thoughts that are thought wanted and unwanted all of them grow and expand we make the distinction that the wanted thoughts that are tended to by your inner being that are sort of vetted you might say by your inner being who knows what love is and who knows what kindness is and who knows what the true expansion of who you are is that part of you is tended to by non-physical and of course you have the privilege or opportunity of thinking any thought that you want to think but your guidance system shows you all along what thoughts you think that harmonize with who you really are and what you really mean and what thoughts don't so it would be accurate to say and easy for you to hear that every thought that anyone has ever thought that didn't feel good when they thought it was not a thought that had been vetted and encouraged by source. Can you sort of get what we're talking about? But those thoughts are still in this freedom that you are allowed to live. And of course it is necessary in this sorting and sifting of contrast process. So those thoughts still exist too. And those thoughts still take on form too. And some of those thoughts turn into manifestation and some of them are just thought forms. And so, so much that people are tapping into that they are referring to as hallucinations maybe or as other dimensions are that there are vibrations people want to call vibrational worlds that if they find the frequency of them that they then can be the receiver of that. And that would be, for example, when we tap into Abraham. When you tap into Abraham, you're tapping into who you really are. For example, let's say that you were mistreated when you were little and you held that in your consciousness and then you were mistreated as you moved through life and that was just the way you believed and through all of that you're launching these rockets of desire. In other words, how many horror movies do you watch and you got to wonder where does the inspiration for those come and it comes from that bank of thoughts that everyone has thought. And so when you ask if there are other dimensions, we have to say that any thought that has ever been thought could accurately be described of a dimension of its own. Humans are sort of in a dimension. Many of you are in a sort of dimension caught between dimensions where few of you are ever really in harmony with who you really are all the time. Sort of like you've got one foot in both worlds, which sort of creates another dimension of its own. Where are these questions coming from? In other words, give us the picture of what you have come to believe or wonder if it exists and we'll just explain to you whether it does or whether it doesn't and why. It's hard for me to explain because I'm having a hard time understanding. So there are other life forms and other dimensions and time is not linear. And I found myself sitting there taking notes going, I, I don't know that I understand all of it and sorting through it. It's like, well, I know somewhere. So you're talking about this other seminar that you just attended? It's more than that, just one, but they talked about that at that seminar too. Let us appeal to the logic of your mind. So. Uh-oh. <laughs> We're really out there now. <laughs> Is it logical to you that this would be the only environment, this planet Earth would be the only environment where thoughts are turning to things? No, not anymore. So starting with that understanding that non-physical is expansive and that therefore there must be many time space realities where non-physical is expressing in a fuller fashion, then that feels sort of logical. Just picture that source, you can start with this vortex if you want to, this vortex that has been created as a result of what you all are living. What if there are a lot of other satellite deliberate creative environments 
manifested environments where the same sort of thing is happening so it's not just your contribution to all that is that's going here it's a lot of contributions from a lot of different perspectives that are going into let's say a big gigantic non-physical vortex or you can call it the beginning of what is source and the expansion of what is source so we have our individual vortexes as well as a collective vortex. Just like you do here on this planet. You're creating your individual vortex and the consciousness of your planet is creating one too. And yours is part of that greater one or you can focus only on yours and isolate it. But there is no ending to the expansion of consciousness. So of course, consciousness that man may want to call God, we would like to call it source, is benefiting not only from what you all are living in your time and space but what others are living in theirs as well so there's this big vortex of knowing and consciousness and future and becoming how are you doing you staying with us a little bit blame her when it's over it's all right so then let's say that you in your human form Withdraw from whatever you're giving your attention to. Get into a meditative state. Not offering any resistance to anything. Come into perfect harmony with your inner being. Now, you see your inner being in your vortex? Can you sort of get that idea? And if your inner being is in that vortex, then doesn't your inner being have access to everything that's being experienced in all of those environments? And isn't it conceivable that if your inner being is there, and knowing that, and you got in the receiving mode, that you could receive some of that? Yeah. But the difficulty is, how do you translate that into anything that's meaningful here? Because this is the environment in which you know, these are the structures that you understand. And so that's why we say, there aren't any spaceships coming in from other places. And of course you can pick up on the existence of, and the knowledge of, but it's very vague and general concepts that you are able to translate because you cannot translate the literal beingness of that through the data that you have here. Is that helpful? Yes. Does that sort of explain? I think so and it's almost like a baby doesn't run before they crawl and walk. But we also in this conversation we don't want you to make it sound like we're saying that it was all of your intention to get here and get in meditation so that you can tap into other dimensions. You came here to live in this dimension. You came here to focus here. You came here to expand the knowledge here. You came here to take this basis of understanding and allow it through your interpretation to be more. Doesn't by virtue of being here and tapping in to other places expand the here? Yes, it does. So what if? there is some other dimension that is unspeakable and unnameable but experiences are being had that is feeding the knowledge of the whole and what if in your lack of resistance you tapped into that and so you gained that knowledge when we say to you that there are not any pipelines that are trucking supplies in that doesn't mean that there are not thought pipelines that are trucking in knowing what if someone somewhere figured out how to live on a small sphere and get along? Wouldn't that be nice? What if in the evolution of the human being there was an understanding of more stability? That would be wonderful. So, of course, there is all of that intertwining. When Esther first began receiving us, some people came from another conference. They were very excited and they were really into other dimensions. And they were so annoyed with us that we would not tell them what planet we were from. They knew for sure we were not from this planet. And so why wouldn't we assign ourselves some other planet? And today, if we were having the conversation with them, we would say, there you go again, always wanting to make everything about the physical manifestation, where what we're wanting you to do is to find the essence of where you come from. But really, you can tell by the conversation and where it's going. We just can't get anywhere with you about any of this because this is not what you are about. What you are about is exploring your environment and letting this environment produce desire within you and then you coming into vibrational alignment with it and you turning those thoughts to things. And we're not in for a moment wanting to limit you about anything that you can think about 
because if any thought occurs to you if there's a burning question within you there's got to be an answer that will come forth that will satisfy you when we talk about what your source knows and then we talk about you getting into the receiving mode you have to be in the vicinity of what source knows about that topic for you to receive it oh so here we go so you get the sense of this receiving mode that we're talking about this pure positive energy place where your inner being is where the source within you holds knowing and you're somewhere along the emotional scale. You might be depressed. You might be overwhelmed. You might be angry. You might be frustrated. You might be hopeful. You might be in appreciation and joy and passion and love. So you're somewhere on your emotional scale. And you have a relationship with your inner being who is on the emotional scale too, way up here in non-resistance. So as your inner being is knowing what it knows, which means projecting a vibration, offering thought about it, and law of attraction is responding to that thought, this consciousness, this knowing, this inner being you has a vibrational relationship with you, but your inner being never dips down to match you. If you're going to be a perfect match, you've got to come up to the vibrational alignment with your inner being. So your inner being is always calling you. And let's say that you're depressed and you hear the call. Well, it doesn't sound the same to you as when you're elated and you hear the call. Are you following that? We've sort of been down this conversation before, haven't we? So the less resistance you have, the higher your vibrational frequency, the higher your vibrational frequency, the more possibility of being in alignment with who you are. And the more in alignment with who you are, the more clarity you feel, the more ease you feel, the more love you feel, the more joy you feel. And in every moment, you have some relationship with your inner being that is somewhere in this range. All right. So... Now, getting back to the conversation that you were introducing. So let's establish, let's acknowledge that your inner being has knowledge beyond your comprehension, which is another way of saying knowledge beyond your right now current ability to find a receptive mode for. So when you are involved in your own life experience here in this environment, that you know, it's more likely for you to hook up with your inner being and take thought beyond. But when you're asking questions about other planets that are confusing to you, of other experiences where you don't have any basis of knowing or understanding, when you're getting your conversation from movies you've watched or from scary things that people are offering, then you're somewhere else and you're not going to find that clarity. But what if You've asked the question, so you've put it into your vortex. And then you don't try to define it. You just get into that meditative state. In time, everything that you've been able to find a question for, it is our promise to you that you will find an answer for. And a lot of that are the descriptions that others are offering about other dimensions and things like that. That is, in fact, what is going on. If you've been listening to us for a while, you've not heard us be very encouraging about that. Because we know that you've come with enough purpose here in this physical environment to live happily ever after. And your intention isn't to know everything that could ever be known because you know that you're an eternal being who will never cease to be. You know that there will never be an end to who you are. You know that there will never be an end to the expansion that is you. And so you just want to watch yourself and see if you're getting into that lack-based questioning. Why is it that you want to know? Why is it that you want to know what you want to know? Is it for the enhancement of your own experience? Or is it because you want some more evolved crowd on some other more evolved leading edge to come and save you from your own destruction? There are a lot of reasons that a lot of people are reaching into that. This conversation, is it a satisfying conversation or a not satisfying conversation to you? Satisfying? Yes. Not satisfying? Yes. In other words, it's sort of a mixed bag, isn't it? Yes. And it's because you can't really, as you said several times, you can't really get your thoughts around it. Is there more out there? Yes. Does most of it have anything to do with you? No. Yes. It's sort of like Noah's book here in this physical environment. <laughs> Most of the things that you think you want to give your attention to have little or nothing to do with you. And so we just want you to ask the question about anything that you're focusing upon. Is the mere focusing upon it enhancing your experience? And if it is, if it feels elating to you, like elation or fascination or strong interest, then that means there's enough in your vortex that has come into a frequency that could manifest into something that is tangible for you and therefore you should pursue it. Does that clarify? Thank you so much.